We are live right now on Investor Thrive Nation. This is the Painless Flipping Podcast. I got my man on here, Anthony Kassar. What is up, brother? What's up, brother? Happy to be on. Oh, man, I'm so grateful that you came on today. Guys, if you don't know who the the freak Anthony Kassar is, you need to freaking step up and, and turn on some YouTube, watch some stuff. Man, the man, the myth, the legend. Dude, I, I saw your finals match. I've been following you. Is that weird, bro? Is that weird when people no. are like, no, is that's it, cool. Is, is that weird when <laughs> people just come it. up to you and they're like, "Oh, I've seen you around, bro. I've seen your matches." No, up here, I, I still live in Penn State, and it's like a bubble, so everyone knows the wrestlers out here. It's, it's, uh, I'm used to it by now. Dang, why is why are wrestlers so good up north, bro? Why are you guys so good? Is that all you do up there, or what? Yeah, I mean, you got the cold weather, you got the, you know, the hard parents. It all just kind of comes together, and uh, you know, we know how to scrap. So, so I grew up in Georgia, and I wrestled too, and I came up to a, a, a tournament in Ohio and got my butt whooped, bro. <laughs> I was like, these guys were like, I was shooting on them, and they were just like scrambling for my ankles, and I was like, yeah. what is? I didn't, we didn't know what scrambling was when we came up there, and then that just seemed to be like a thing up yeah, north. So I was shook. Quick. I got, I got, I, I got rocked. But anyway, <laughs> man, for everybody that doesn't know, Anthony. Can Give us a little bit, uh, you know, give everybody a little bit of uh, a summary about who you are, man. I mean, I'll, I would talk about it, but I want to yeah. kind of have you you say it. Yeah, so I'm uh, known as a wrestler. Uh, I uh, was an NCAA champ for Penn State at heavyweight in 2019. And then uh, I got into real estate during COVID and I was pursuing my, my dream of becoming an Olympic champ and was on a good path to do so. And then uh, broke my shoulder in the qualifying tournament. So, uh, and then COVID hit. And I had a lot of time on my hands, like everyone else. Found real estate, Jerry Norton, and uh, <laughs> shout out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, have done a few deals since. And now it's you know a passion of mine as I pursue my my next goals of uh, you know the same goal, becoming the best in the world. But now it's through MMA. So uh, that's kind of where I'm at. Bro, so were you a big fan of MMA like growing up, or did you just mm -hmm. kind of see like, hey, this is something that I can take my skills into? How, how did that work out? Yeah, I watched it since I was a kid, like Fedor, Vitor, yes. Belt, like all the OGs, <laughs> and it was wild back then. Like watching Pride and, and those guys, it was it was barbaric and violent, but entertaining. With the um, stomps on the face and everything. Yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. basically no rules. And, yes. Uh, you know, someone coming with one boxing glove and then it versus just two guys. So it was wild, yeah. but I was always a fan of it. And then when I got to high school and I was, you know, uh, achieving more in wrestling and I saw that the wrestlers were starting to succeed in the sport, mm -hmm. it, just, it just clicked. I was like, that's what I'm going to do when I'm done wrestling. Gotcha. So, were you wrestling like since you were a kid or when did you get into wrestling? Yeah, since I was young, seven or eight, um, but I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't really get fully committed to it until halfway through high school. And then, oh, for real? Yeah. So I, I was, uh, just it was more of a hobby until then, and then mm -hmm. I really committed. I didn't win a state title until my senior year, and okay. uh, so it was kind of like catching up through Penn State, and uh, you know, improve from there. Bro, that is that's freaking wild. I was kind of like you in the sense, like I I was a big fan of UFC, like at mm -hmm. Pride. I, I was always watching Fedor, and I was like, bro, why doesn't this guy go to the UFC and fight some some yeah. of that real talent, bro? That's at least what I thought. <laughs> yeah. And didn't you want that like growing up? For You're sure. Like, I don't want Fedor to fight like Everyone the Bigfoot did. Silva or whoever was the champ at that yeah. time. I, yeah. I, I was a freaking big fan of Fedor. I was like, this Russian dude's nuts, man. Yeah, he, I love him. He looks like all like fluffy, but he, he'll crush you. Yeah. That was sweet. Did you did you have like a favorite UFC champ or fighter growing up, like Matt Hughes or anything like that? Uh, his opponent, GSP. Oh, GSP. That's my guy. Yeah, yeah. GSP's a man. Is have you what? met GSP, bro? I feel like you should. Not have yet. Been uh, I've been in the same circles, but I haven't uh, haven't met him yet. But I just loved how he wasn't a natural. He didn't grow up wrestling, but he picked it up quickly. Dude. Like he was he was going to wrestle for the Canadian national team in wrestling, and he didn't even grow up doing that. So the way he like factored that into his fights and how well rounded he was, that was like what I looked to. Yeah, it was so interesting, like how they he got so good at the double leg and the takedowns. Yeah. Like against Matt, I remember Matt Hughes. He was just like rocking Matt. Hughes. Yeah, Matt and I was, was a like, wrestler. I was like, how's that happening? <laughs> um, do you remember when uh, he fought Matt Sarah and he yeah. Matt Sarah beat him and yeah. everyone, everyone was shook. I was shook. I was like, well, how do you how do you lose to Matt Sarah? But then he he, he crushed him next. Yeah. On the rematch. Yeah, he had some wild trilogies. That's wild, man. Yeah. Okay, so you uh you got into wrestling and you were um you know not you said you took it serious like halfway through high school yeah right? mm -hmm. and then you won your state championship how did that feel to win senior year was that like a big accomplishment or were you like whatever man I, i'm a champ already yeah. <laughs> yeah i started calling myself the champ junior year before i'd even yeah. qualified for state so wow people were looking at me a little crazy there but yeah it just clicked after junior year when i failed to qualify 
-hmm. And I was like, all right, this is, you know, this is not what I'm about. I'm going to put my head down, do everything it takes to win a state title. And then it was big. It was big for me because it was the first one I won. It was the first one that my, uh, I won for the school. Like, wow. and then it, you know, it, it set me up to go to a school like Penn state. So it was, it was my, uh, you know, first big accomplishment. What do you think happened when you said you already called yourself the champ? So you had, you put it out there, the secret you put, yeah. you believed in yourself. Did you do anything specific to get there? Were you training more? Do you watch yeah. videos? What did you do? What do you think helped you get that leap? Yeah. I mean, I wasn't even training hard in the off season. So I just completely dialed in. I was training twice a day from the day after I, I, I failed to qualify up through the following season and, uh, you know, was traveling 45 minutes to another club there and back was like an hour and a half every day along with my school practices. So I, I, I definitely increased my workload a lot, mm -hmm. but it was, it was the main thing was just visualizing that and believing it and everything else fell into place. Was it an upset or were you like d d starting the season? Was everyone like, this guy's going to take it? No, it, it was definitely, definitely an upset. The kid I beat in the finals, it was the fourth time we wrestled that year. I went undefeated, but um, wow. yeah, it wasn't until, until later in the year that everyone was like, all right, he might have a chance. Wait, you beat this guy three times before? Yeah, in the same <laughs> season. Yeah, it was tough. Oh, was dang, tougher. bro. That's yeah. not fair, man. I hate when you got to go against the same guy over and over and then they, they get ready. I almost feel like by winning every time you're at a disadvantage because they, I don't know, they dissect. Yeah. I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah, they got you, nothing but... to lose and they get like more of a read on you. So you got to go out there like it's your first match every time, too. Yeah, you see that chance Marceller match with uh, Jordan Burroughs? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, yeah. I don't, that might play into that. I feel like Jordan just like was at a disadvantage. Chance was just may, maybe just getting older or whatever, but yeah. I feel like that Chance just picked him up. Yeah, that was crazy crazy bro so tell me about that so after uh, high school did mm -hmm. you go you didn't go to the olympics or try for that until after college right that was after yeah that? yeah okay so t tell me about the experience of graduating picking what school and, and wrestling co in college because i know that's that's a lot there too yeah so i knew i had a lot of ground to make up uh you know being kind of fresh in the sport at least being fully involved in the sport mm -hmm. and penn state at the time and still is was the number one team in the nation so uh i was like i have to go there i need to level up quickly and uh that's the best place for me to be at and then once i visited the school and hung out with the coaches and the guys like they just have a great environment a great faithful environment just good people but guys that want to win more than anything and so that you know aligned with me and uh jumped right in there it was rough at first but you know improved 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 and mine was more at like an accelerated rate because of how much room i had to go yeah and uh you know had some good wins along the way and then finally achieved my goal senior year and after that it was the next goal that's wild bro do you have any crazy stories about kale like is there anything about that dude because i mean he, he he's the one that like turned that program around right for sure yeah yes. any, anything about him um, I mean, I'm sure there's quite a bit. Yeah, there's quite a bit. But I mean, he was just starting to slow down now. But he wrestled mm -hmm. with the top guys throughout my entire college career. Like we, we must Very have wrestled wild. over 100 matches and he would just beat the heck out of everybody. <laughs> so <laughs> he's he a big start... guy, though, right? He's not he's not small. Yeah, yeah. He's like about 200. Okay. And so he didn't start slowing down until 40s. Bro, what in the world is that guy on, man? What is he <laughs> running off of faith in yeah, Jesus exactly. or something? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, because I'm I'm from Utah, right? So mm -hmm. uh they talk about him a lot. I was I was actually going against jujitsu from guy, some guy that trained with he says, I don't really know him, Ricky Marcella or something. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. know him? So yeah. uh, there's a guy in my gym that trained with him and he always tells stories about Kale whooping on him. And I'm like, man, this guy loves telling Kale stories, dude. Ricky Lundell. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it, Lundell. Yeah. Yeah, he's a yeah. beast, right? He's a that's beast, why. yeah. Real good. Okay. Yeah, because mm -hmm. again, this guy in the jiu-jitsu gym, he loves Ricky, bro. He's like one of Ricky's best friends. And Got it. he's always telling me stories about – he said that – I don't know if I believe this. Maybe you could tell me, but he said he put Kale in like a uh, – what is that? Uh, I forgot the move. It's a triangle choke. Okay. Uh, he said he put Kale in that, and then yeah. Kale was like, "All right, bro, let's freaking go for real." And then <laughs> yeah. Kale beat him up for like an hour. Yeah, I could see. <laughs> Sound, that. Sounds like that. That might, you know, yeah. I don't know if you could put Kale in a triangle, but maybe you did. Who knows? Yeah. So that. very interesting. So you, I, I, I've always wanted to ask like a really high level, one of the highest level wrestlers I know is you. Is uh, how was wrestling in college, man? Was it like, did it kind of suck because you? like couldn't really enjoy i wouldn't say the full experience of college but did it get in the way of like oh man i just want to hang out and party or yeah. relax yeah so i had an interesting story because i came in in my first two years like i you know i was doing everything so i mm -hmm. was you know i, I wasn't completely locked in because that's not mm -hmm. how i was in high school it's not really you know how i was raised in this sport that you didn't have to do every little thing right so th that was brand right. new to me that when you got to penn state like a lot of the guys didn't drink a lot of guys didn't party like they were locked in 
Yeah. And um, for me, it was like, oh, I work hard, play hard. It's like that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then two, two or two or three years went by, and I was progressing a lot, but I wasn't significantly closer to achieving my goal of becoming an NCAA champ. Mm-hmm. And so about halfway through college, I just completely bought into the mentality and um, locked in every every single detail. Like probably became more extreme than everyone else there. Like I was like, all right, if I'm doing this, like I'm, that's just how my personality is. And um, from there, my success like skyrocketed. So, wow. and at that point, I didn't really see it as much of a sacrifice. Like this is just what I'm choosing to do because I want I want this thing at the end of you know to get to point B. I want this, so I'm um, choosing to to make these these changes. So it wasn't like I was missing out on a bunch. Yeah, no, it's true. Especially if that's your goal that's driving you, you're not too worried about you know all the other little details. Yeah. What What was one thing that you you like at the beginning? You're like, man, this is stupid. I don't want to do this. But then you like were really strict about it because I heard like he doesn't want any caffeinated or no soda or something. Like it, <laughs> that might not be true. But no, is there anything no. like that? No, I mean he he doesn't get into the specifics of it. It's more just like living the right way. Like everyone knows how to eat right and sleep right and gotcha. um you know not going out and partying and stuff. The basics. I've definitely gotten more strict over the years uh, and like given up more and more because I just see there's always one more percent to get better. Right. And like yeah. a little, little bit of an edge. So uh, I'm definitely more of an extreme one. Like I, you know, I don't drink caffeine anymore. Don't drink like those kind of things. Cause I just, yeah, bro. I'm just locked in. And um, if, if there's any little bit of help that I can get, I'm going to get it for the years that I still have to compete, you know, freaking let's go. Yeah. I'm, and I'm, I think Kale, I don't know if he is still, but he's Mormon, right? He's LDS. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So me too. So I, I, I'm sure it was a little easier for him to like live that lifestyle than yeah. like, for a lot of the guys that came in. He's like, don't drink, don't do this. Yeah. But then, you know, you get locked in, you put away all that, the distractions and then you're fr- freaking excelling, which exactly. is, uh, which is awesome. Yeah. All right. So let's now you, you crush it. You win the NCAA title, which is amazing. Like mm-hmm. one of the greatest accomplishments ever. I'm assuming you're just like stoked about it still. Yeah. I'd be mm-hmm. pumped forever. <laughs> um, what what next what was the next uh road you took so the next the next thing was to become the best in the world right it became the best in the state then the nation the world's the, the next biggest thing so that was my goal and uh i was on track to do so i, I decided to come back for another year of college because i had i got hurt so i had a medical year right so uh, i decided to come back while i pursued that goal and then uh in the first tournament to qualify for the olympic trials uh that's when i broke my shoulder so everything kind of got thrown off and I was, Dang. you know, at the top of the mountain and feeling great. And, and then, uh, the kid that I beat in the, in the nationals went on to win the Olympic gold medal. Oh. So, so I'm sitting at home. You, you fired know. up, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had, a, I've had a couple of years now, yeah. but, uh, yes, yes. but, uh, you know, I'm sitting at home during COVID and, uh, and he's doing that. And so that, you know, that little fire fire under me to, to come back and now I'm healthy again. And, it was either go back to wrestling or transfer over to MMA. And I felt like God was leading, more, leading me towards MMA. And now I'm on the pursuit of, of that same goal, just, you know, a little bit of a different sport. Bro, future future MMA champ right here, bro? You know it, bro. Dude. <laughs> how, how old are you, by the way? I'm just curious. 27. 27. Yeah, bro. So you re- you're ready to rock and roll. Our, let me ask you this, man, because I, I you're friends with Bo Nickel, right? Yep. Yep. So, so I see Bo and I'm like, bro, this, this wrestling, these, your background, like the background of the Penn state guys, like they're going to blast through even the top competition. Do you feel like that already? Like, bro, just put me in front of these people. Like I'll take them down and, and whoop them. Do you feel like that? Or you're like, uh, I'm a little bit more cautious. Maybe I'm not that, uh, yeah. confident yet. I mean, it's, it's a fact that it's the biggest advantage of combat sports, right? Like we could yeah, dictate right. where the fight goes. Now, are we going to go against the champion in, in, in our division right away? No, because we're going to be smart and build up to it. Can we go in there and take him down and hold him down for three, five rounds? Probably. Yeah. Um, is that going to make for a very exciting fight? No. So <laughs> Who cares, bro? Yeah. Just down. <laughs> so uh, I think for me, and I know for him, like we're working on striking jiu-jitsu, like we're working on becoming well-rounded mixed martial artists so that right. um, we can stay at the top for a while regardless of, of who comes up. So what way would you fight at right now? In the, uh, 205. 205? Yeah. Bro, I'm looking at the 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 champion and like the the people at 205, and I'm like, a wrestler could w- yeah. work those guys. Do you agree, or do you not feel like that? Yeah, I agree. I think the I think it's been pretty weak since John Jones left. Some yeah, John Jones is a beast. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For Some sure. talent, but not uh, not super well rounded. So I'm excited to to get there and start working my way up. Yeah, like for example, Izzy, like amazing striker, right? Mm-hmm. And he's got good defense, but I feel like a a really good wrestler could 
take them down and, and work them right and win that way and then so i was at a gym here in utah they're having the ufc um yeah, out here card. oh man i'm stoked but so i i just saw yesterday uh jan uh jan blank Blank blankowitz or whatever Box jan? Words, yeah yeah, mm -hmm. so I just saw him and I was talking to him for a little bit. Oh, he, no way. He, yeah, he obviously didn't want to talk to me. He's like, get yeah. out of it. Get, get out of my face. <laughs> but he was at the gym that I uh, was rolling at and he Sweet. walked in with his, yeah, it was pretty cool. His crew, a bunch of Polish like people just rolling in. Yeah. And uh, and I'm like, you know, he's a, he's a beast, bro. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, you get hit with that, it's going to hurt. Yeah. But, um, you know, his wrestling too, like, you know, it's, I, I would say it's good. I don't yeah. know as well as probably you do, but you know, I just feel like a lot of guys at that top tier, they're not like um they don't have that that skill set yet right they're yeah. not there cool i'm curious man i didn't know you said you broke your shoulder yep so kind of tell me how, did, did that happen on a specific move or um, yeah i had issues with the shoulder prior i had a couple surgeries on it but i had mm -hmm. i'd had had years like of no issues mm -hmm. and then uh i was wrestling at heavyweight so mm -hmm. i was about 240 and i was wrestling you know guys that were anywhere from 265 to 285 big boys yeah real big boys and uh that's what i what that's what i won the ncaa's at um mm -hmm. and then when i was wrestling this one guy who was just a big old big boy and uh i uh, shot a double leg and i was chasing him out of bounds and i, I kind of ran him out of bounds and then he he stopped so i kind of relaxed yeah and then, and then he like threw all of his weight down after that and it, it was more of like a like the, the the doctor said it was more of like an nfl like collision like than um a wrestling injury so crazy and the yeah. recovery on that was during covid is that yeah it was during covid so i had about a year and then i started getting back into it and the shoulder the, the surgery didn't take so i had to get another one and then uh i had my first fight back in december so it was it was a couple years it was almost three years before i competed again wow dude were you considering going a different route than mma were you just like man maybe i'll do something else well that's how i came into real estate because i was like yeah, let's go know, into that <laughs> yeah it was always in the back of my mind and I had time and I was laid up mm -hmm. and uh, basically just learned from YouTube University, Jerry Norton and uh, King Kong and learned everything I could about wholesaling and flipping mm -hmm. because I knew I had to continue to compete. Like it's just right in me. It's, it's I feel it's what God made me to do. And so I knew that was going to be coming back, but I knew I also need to give my body some time to recover and rehab and all that. And with COVID, it was like indefinite. So that's how I started pursuing at least some other passion. Which was real estate. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I'm I'm assuming. So, kind of tell me where where you, you want to take real estate. Is it as you make money and as you grow in the sport, you you want to invest, reinvest it? Do you want to run like kind of a business at the same time? Like, where where are you thinking now? Where yeah. does real estate take place, or does it not take place, and you're just fully uh, locked in? Yeah, it's been tough because you know I was all in when I was injured. I you know did some wholesales, did some flips, made some good money. Mm -hmm. uh, started make, started creating the business, building the business, hiring people. Uh, you know went out to Puerto Rico with Jerry Norton, did that whole thing. And it was awesome. Like I, I learned so much from it all. Yeah. Um, but then as you get back into training and competing, you can only do so much, right? Like if it's a hobby, sure. But if this, especially with fighting, like you can't, yeah. be, can't be half in half out. So yeah. my, my plan is to, I just bought my first rental too. So my plan is to do what I can, like a deal here and there. If a good uh, lead comes up, I'll wholesale it or flip it. And then, um, you know, put in my fight purses and stuff into more long-term holds and multiple units type thing and, and expand from there. So uh, it's just kind of something I'm doing on the side as of now. And then when I retire, go back to uh, all in. I love it, man. I think that's a good idea. Cause really you got to focus on one thing, right? Like if you want to be the best, yeah, it's going to be tough to run a wholesale business yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and what, pe what people on the weekend, you know, exactly. Um, <laughs> imagine that. <laughs> <That'd be insane. laughs> hey, bro, let me yeah. you get your hand raised. You're like, Hey, you know, signing yeah. a deal. <laughs> Someone's yelled at me, yelled at me on the phone. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's amazing. One thing that I teach, I don't know if which, as much what you know about what I do, but I call yeah. it painless flipping or mm -hmm. wholesaling. It's where like through social media, through networking, through other wholesalers, I get like opportunities that come to me, right? Mm -hmm. And I have specific buyers that I know are buying areas, right? So for example, if you knew, if you were investing in, you said you're in PA, right? Yep. So if you're investing in PA, you could just make a post and just be like, it, it, for example, not something mm -hmm. you have to do, but you'd be like, hey, guys, if anybody's got a property that they're, they're selling, let me know. And then yeah. if someone has some, they send it to you. And instead of you having to go through the whole process, you just connect it to your buyer and just say, hey, I think I have an opportunity you might be interested in. How much would you pay for it? Wow. And that way, I just connect people. 
And I take out like having to run comps. I take out mm. having to sign contracts and do all this extra work, which is fine. You know, some people do that, yeah. but I like to, I like to be quick about it. So yeah. I get deals sent to me. And I think with like, as you grow, you know, there's a lot of people that might just bring you stuff just because yeah. you're going to have a bigger reach. So it's an option. That's, that's cool. That's, that's what I do. Just connect. You just take like a finder's fee. Uh, yeah, I just I just add the difference. So for example, mm-hmm. if I'm talking to if someone brings me a lead like, hey, man, I found a deal. I don't have a buyer for it. I say, OK, what, what does the seller want? The seller wants 90. So mm-hmm. then I would say, hey, John, my buyer, right? I text John. I say, John, this is looks like a good opportunity. What would you pay for it if I can get it done for you? Mm-hmm. Uh, I can pay 110. So now there's a twenty thousand dollar spread. Yeah. And that's my difference. That, that That's what I would make. Got uh, it. So you can either wholesale like that. You can either get it as a finder's fee an invoice. It doesn't really matter what you do, how do you get paid, but really it's just connecting people. And it takes me maybe like a couple hours at most to connect people with some text yeah. messages. So and they just follow through with all the work. So that's smart. They they take care of the contract. If you trust the buyer, right? If you yeah. trust your buyer, your people, they mm-hmm. take they can take care of the contract. You can even connect them to the seller or the wholesaler and just say, bro, just pay me a close. Yeah. You know, and that's smart. Yeah. I like it just because again, time is valuable for you, time is val- yeah. valuable for me. And it takes quite a bit of time to do the whole process if you, this is quicker. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough, but I'll, I'll have to put one of them on the side for now. And, uh, yeah, for you know, sure. is my focus. So let's do really it, man. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about your first MMA fight before we wrap up. Cause I'm curious. I, I saw, I saw a quick video of you, the mm-hmm. head and arm choke, right? That's what we call yeah. it here. I, I don't know if that's what you call it there, yep. but, um, bro, did you just walk through this guy or how did it, how did it go? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, it was big. Like I said, it was, it had been three years since I competed. And uh, my first MMA fight, I only trained, you know, three months for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and the goal was to go in there and, you know, not just use my wrestling, see if mm-hmm. I can throw some hands. And I was working with my boxing coach, who was helping me out a bunch. And so got in there, threw a quick one, one, two, knocked him down, thought he was, thought he was going to be out, but he stayed alive. So, uh, <laughs> stayed alive. <bro. laughs> so, so jumped on him and uh, ground and pounded for a bit. And then it seemed like he wanted a way out. So I just snuck in that uh, arm triangle or had an arm choke and it was good. So it was. <laughs> You never, you never know how, how you're going to feel going walk into a cage, right? Like uh, wrestling's wrestling, but yeah, um, I was really happy with how I felt. I felt like I was at home and I was just excited to get back in there. So it was a great first fight. That's hilarious. He wanted an a, a way out. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, bro, just put me out, dude. Yeah. You can tell when those eyes start getting big <laughs> and they're like looking around. I'm like, all right. It's like, dude, just through. tap, man. I don't even yeah. have to put you out. What's your, uh, do you have a name like, uh, like in the middle, Anthony, the, the, Anthony the champ. goat, what was it? Anthony, Anthony champ. And the champ. Yeah. All right. That's a good one. Who came? Yeah. Did you just come up with that? Or, well, you called yourself that in junior when you were a junior, right? You called yeah. yourself the champ? It's, yeah. It's been, it's stuck since then. So, oh, sh- shoot. All right, yeah. bro. <laughs> well, man, this has been fun. Um, I, I kind of want, everyone to get in the mind of like a champion like you that's like you you won in high school you won in college you're i i know you're gonna win uh, a belt bro that's just how you are that's yeah. just how it is you know you yeah. got it in your head what's the difference between you i would say like that the bleeds you're gonna get it and you work towards it and other people that want some but they don't do it like what would you say you're the difference in you and other people are yeah i think there's a lot that goes into it but i mean first step is just deciding you know i feel like a lot of people don't know what they want um so deciding and get super clear on what that is. And then knowing that, you know, something that Coach Kale pre- preaches a lot is, you know, getting clear on that and then knowing it's your responsibility to go out and get it. And so, you know, seeking out whatever information you need or this next steps you can get the best you can and going after it full throttle. And then, um, you know, the third thing is just being grateful for for the opportunity you have to do so and everything that uh, God's blessed you with and all the good and bad, you know, ultimately leads you to to being the best version of yourself. So those are the three steps that's preached a lot at Penn State. Decide, you know, it's your responsibility mm-hmm. and then have gratitude along the way. And I think if you start off with those um, and you truly believe in yourself and want what you say you want, uh, you'll figure out a way to get it. It's just taking those steps to, to take action and do so. I love it. Now, just quick follow-up question. Is there anything you do daily or weekly to express gratitude or st- stay grateful? Like anything like a routine or anything like that? Yeah, definitely through my, my daily prayers. Uh, that's a big part. And then I like to just list a couple of things in my mind. And then I just recently came across this, this new practice that uh, Andrew Huberman has been uh, talking about where it's just like reviewing an instance in your life that you did something for someone that they were grateful for that. Mm-hmm. And that seems, that seems to like switch something on your brain. Um, yeah. Yeah. Where you just like review a scenario where there was a problem, you solved it, or you, 
you know, help someone in some way. And, and that makes you feel good. And, 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 you know, from that mindset and framework, you can achieve more and do more for other people. So no, I love, I actually did an exercise. It, it, it's from a book called psycho cybernetics. Um, okay. It might be kind of like this along the same oh, line. I actually just got gifted that book. That's funny, bro. You need to read it. It's a good. Yeah. One. So psycho cybernetics, it talks about, I guess, something you can do um, activity you can do daily. It's called theater of the mind where okay. you basically go into your mind and you replay activities where you won or things you've done or you've helped people mm -hmm. and in, your mind doesn't really know the difference between it happening back then and today mm -hmm. so if you re you replay you winning that championship or you submitting that guy or you helping out that grandma with the groceries you literally relive that experience today like it, you feel yeah. like just like you did so that that's a huge thing for gratitude i do that daily so every day i'm super grateful as well and that's the key man i, I love that you you brought that up because gratitude is huge a lot of yeah. a lot of people complain and it, it keeps them from growing you know yeah i love i love that that uh practice too because that's the same way that i visualize right like starting living from the end has been big for me um even when i was in high school just naturally like calling myself the champ like starting from where you want to be yeah, and then right. and then you're, like you said your mind can't tell the difference so it starts attracting in what you need to achieve it bro i freaking love it i, I i'm excited to follow your journey bro G Thank huge you, bro. mma fan I, I i guarantee i'm putting it out there bro you're gonna be a champ dog of and course, it's gonna be bro. it's gonna be amazing it's already you're, written it's already written dude you're mm -hmm. the champ <laughs> we're gonna be able to look back at this painless flipping podcast it's about real estate <laughs> and we're gonna be like hey back in you know 2023 i'm the champ now but that you know exactly we, we spoke it and it's out there yeah. so anything you want to leave the you know investor Drive nation with before we dip out any any gold nuggets any tips anybody that's you know might need some help uh I, I mean i just appreciate you bro i know when i got connected with jerry you were a big part of uh even like the weekly zooms and uh he would bring you in a bunch and uh, I started following your Facebook page and stuff. So just props to what you got going on. I know you're going to continue to improve and you're on the same wavelength. So thanks for all the help you provide to, you know, the community. And Dude, thank you. Yeah. And there's nothing that I can tell them that, that they can't find uh, for you. So just uh, keep it going. Bro, let's go. Everybody follow my man. Do you, you want them to follow you or, or sure. check you out? Yeah. Where should they hit you up if they want to want to follow your journey, brother? I'm at uh, Ant underscore the champ underscore Kassar on uh, Instagram. Uh, and underscore the champ on Twitter and uh, pretty much just use both those. So Twitter and Instagram. All right, brother. Cool. Well, everybody go follow him and, uh, you know, excited to see your journey, man. Thanks for coming on and we will catch you on the next one, bro. We're gonna have to get you back in like a year and be like, Hey, how's it feel champ? Or whatever, whatever time yeah. thing is. All right. Sounds good, brother. Thank Thanks, you, man. All right. Peace out. Bye.